Hello guys and uh, welcome to Danzo's Biology um, where you can access videos that will lead you to have access and fastest way to solve your biological problems. Now in today's lecture we're going to look at a very important phenomenon in biology that we call alternative splicing. But before we get into alternative splicing, uh, let's look at um, some of the basic information that have direct connection to this alternative splicing process. Now, alternative splicing, um, it basically deals with um, combinations of exons. But exons, how do they come? We try to um, give basic information to that. Now, we all know that when genes or when DNA is to be transcribed, um, into um, RNA, we have what you call splicing process where um, we have different different um, introns and exons and these introns and exons, um, they need to um, separate because since introns do not have any functional um, um, phenotype in our system. So we basically need to remove all the introns from the exons so that our exons can join together and lead to um, the formation or the processing of the process through the process that we call translation. Now, in genetic information, as we know, genes are all stored in our DNA and the genes carry the vital information that we need. And in this DNA is where we have all the genes um, housed. Now, DNA will later be transcribed into RNA, and RNA will later be translated into proteins so that we can see the phenotypes of these proteins. Like, let's talk of, you have a black hair, a gray hair, you have a very tough muscles, your skin color is dark, your skin color is lighter dark. All these things, or all these uh, phenotypes, arises from the proteins that we are seeing here. So it is a very, very complex uh, process. Now, the idea of alternative splicing comes from um, a scientist in 1970s uh, when they um, understand the splicing process that um, different introns will be removed from exons and the exons will combine. And later on, these exons, they realize that different exons can also join. And at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, we see different, different proteins that are being formed from same gene from same genes. So that brings us to alternative splicing because that is what the whole idea is about. Now, why this alternative splicing? Now, one of the most important reasons why alternative splicing is seen is that um, alternative splicing will give you different matured RNA. And this will later on give you to um, an opportunity for genes to be regulated, uh, genes regulation, you know, uh, because we realize that um, our body, our system needs different, different proteins at different, different developmental stages. Now, let's talk of if someone is at the age of seven and one at the age of four. Now, these two people are going to need different proteins different proteins at different times. So because of that, alternative splicing is important so that we can possess different proteins at different times. Okay, um, alternative splicing also is important so that um, different, different proteins can come and these different proteins will give or will provide different functions in our cells. Now, let's take a look at this. Suppose we have... Um, two different proteins. And these two proteins are supposed to play different functions or roles in our system. But if there is no alternative splicing, um, we are going to end up having just one protein. And you will see we're going to have a syndrome in our system since there is going to be a shortage or lack of um, one important protein in our system. Now, in a diagrammatic form, um, these are the genes or let's say this is the DNA itself. So DNA will be copied into RNA. This strand is the RNA strand, and this one is the DNA strand. So this DNA will be copied into RNA here, RNA strand. So this will give you the what you call the precursor messenger RNA. It is the RNA.